John Maxwell has said, leadership is influence. And really, if you're a leader, you have influence. And in some way, that means that you are transformative. But not all transformation is good, which begs the question, which transformative leader are you? In this video, we're going to be talking about the two kinds of transformative leaders and how to be the right kind of transformative leader and what that looks like. And I'm going to give you a recommendation at the end as well, just to take this to the next level, because all of us want to be the good kind of transformative leader. Before we get into all of that, let me introduce myself. My name is Brandon, and this is Rookie Preacher, the place for you if you want to preach and lead better. I'm so glad that you're joining me. So let's get into this. I recently finished a book called A Failure of Nerve, and this has been one of the most transformative, I I guess I'm just going to use that word a lot in this video, the most transformative leadership book I've ever read. And it's not just a really great book, but it's actually a book that I've been using like implementing into my life. And it's going to be a book that I'm going to reread countless times. But toward the end of the book, Edwin Friedman, the author of the book, he made an analogy that I think is so helpful. And he's talking about a topic that we're talking about on transformative leadership. And I just want to read to you some of that because it was so helpful and it's just going to be best coming from his words. So this is from A Failure of Nerve by Edwin Friedman, and uh, this is what he says, starting in page 246. He says, perhaps a transformer in an electrical circuit is the best metaphor for the workings of presence. This is a big theme in the book. Transformers can activate or deactivate a circuit that runs through them depending on the ratio of coils they contain. So he's talking about electricity. He says, for example, one side of the transformer has six coils, the other two. This is a three-to-one transformer. If you send the current in from the two to the six, it will triple. Send it the other way, and it will be reduced to a third of its former strength. Household current in the United States is generally 110 volts, but it is transported at 11,000 volts because it is is cheaper that way. One needs a transformer at a ratio of 100 to 1 at either end to step it up or step it down. This is where he gets into it. Reactive leaders function as a step-up transformer. As one education administrator said, my mother was a step-up transformer, all right. If there was anxiety in the room and she was present, you could count on it escalating. It went into her at 110 and came out at 11,000. I'm sure all of us are thinking of people like that, that we know that if there is any kind of anxiety in a group, they will, ru- they will raise it up exponentially. He says this, though, but it is also possible to be a step-down transformer to function in such a way that you let the current go through you without zapping you or fusing you to the rest of the circuit. This is not easy, and yet it is within the capability of most leaders. It has far more to do with their presence than with their actions. Part of the difficulty in making the conceptual leap from action to presence is that all leaders, parents, or presidents have been trained to do something. That is, to fix it. This is due to the emphasis on the cognitive aspects of the brain, the resulting emphasis on method and technique, and the anxious atmosphere of contemporary society. To the extent that leaders and consultants can maintain a non-anxious presence in a highly energized anxiety field... They can have the same effects on that field that transformers have in an electrical circuit. Transformers have no moving parts. They reduce the potential in a field by the nature of their own presence and being. They are, in effect, a field themselves. This is not a matter of breaking a circuit. It requires staying in touch without getting zapped. Anyone can remain non-anxious if they also try to be non-present. The trick is to be both non-anxious and present simultaneously. So what he's getting at in this book, and specifically in that part, is that when we as leaders interact with the chronic anxiety of groups, of people, of individuals, which is what we do all the time, we have the potential of being transformative leaders, either the kind of transformative leaders who rise, raise the, the anxiety of a group, of a person, of a couple, of a church, of 
whoever we're talking to, or we can be the transformative leader that dials it down. That it goes into us at 11,000, people are upset, people are anxious, people are freaked out. It comes through us, we're connected to them, but it comes out of us at 110, at a reasonable level. So which kind of transformative leader are you? Are you the kind of leader who, when you are in a frustrating or tense situation, do you add to it or because you are a someone who practices a non-anxious presence, because you are able to be connected to someone without uh, acquiring all their anxiety, are you able to be someone who is a calm rock, who calms down every single person around you just by you being you? This is so important for us as leaders. It's been something that over the last year I've certainly been learning. And now that I've read this, it puts words to what I've been feeling and been sensing in me and uh, really the path where I want to go. So let me give you a few scenarios on how this plays out in terms of whether or not we would be a transformative leader that, you know, by our very nature, by our very selves, either lower the anxiety in the room, or we raise it in terms of people in our room, in the room or in the whole church around us. Let me just give you some examples. The first example is creating culture within the church. So if you're in a church that is been around for a little while, uh, you, you would obviously know that every church culture is not perfect. And when you inherit something that has its own kind of levels of dysfunction, that pre- presents a challenge because your very presence is the thing that will transform the culture the most. And so if you come into contact with situations that um, really shouldn't be handled the right the way that they've been handled, like you want to set a culture of health, of like if if someone has an issue with something that was done, we're encouraging them to go directly to that person who's in charge to speak up and not have it be turned into gossip where you take basically what gossip is, right? It's taking that kind of message to the wrong person. And so when anytime criticism is about to happen, like a good healthy culture would be one that drives that person who's upset to speak directly to the person they are upset with because they made that change or they had that decision or whatever it might be. When we encounter the culture not doing what we want it to, like a person not handling a thing the way we want them to, we can either become reactive to that or be because we're able to be calm and be cool about it and be able to guide them toward where we want them to go, we can be transformative in a good way. Uh, those are the two kind of ends of the spectrum, either being reactive or being intentional to respond. Reactive person would say, how dare you? Why would you do that? You are obviously off your rocker. You are, you are not handling this the right way. Why are you? This is so dumb. You are gossiping. You are sinful. This is ridiculous. Go home. I don't want to talk to you. The non-anxious person, the one who's not reactive, could simply say, hey, I hear you. I understand you're frustrated. But can I just ask you, have you talked to them about it? Not in a way that you amp it up, not in a way that you dismiss their concerns, but you simply stay calm. You, you, you're, you remain connected. You don't just say, well, hey, I just can't deal with this. Um, because, you know, that could be a non-anxious way of being not present. But you, you hear what they have to say, and you simply ask calmly, hey, have you talked to them? Because what I would encourage you to do is, if you haven't talked to them, go talk to them about it. And this conversation between you and me, if you've not talked to them, really I have nothing else to say about this. I mean, we can talk about something else, but this specific instance, we, we don't need to be talking about it because you haven't talked to the right person. The second kind of application I can think of is leading through crises. 
obviously within the last year, because I'm making this video in 2021, in the last year, um, we've dealt with some major crises, you know, crisis of, of the COVID pandemic and many, many crises associated with all the different things that we're doing associated with that and all the other cultural moments that we've had over the last year. Leading through crisis um, as a non-anxious leader versus a reactive leader looks far, far different. A So what kind of transformative leader are you? In the midst of a crisis, a reactive leader simply takes all of the anxiety that they are feeling and spreads it out to everyone they know, everyone on their team, everyone who would simply have an ear to hear. They, they spread it out. And because they're not sure what to do and because they're dealing with all kinds of, uh, you know, maybe uh, conflict and they're dealing with frustrations from people toward them, they're dealing with just the, the anxiety of not knowing what to do. They're reactive. They're trying all these different things and they don't have any kind of presence of mind to be intentional about their actions. They're just trying to trying to survive and, and every day is some other new thing that has to be done. And, and they're just tense and they're, and they're, they're anxious and they, they spread that out to the rest of the team. And the team kind of cringes when that leader comes by them because they don't know what they're going to get because they're not sure if they're going to come up with some other huge project that needs to be done within the next three minutes because uh, in crisis they're, they've turned all these things, all these ideas into urgent matters, whether or not they're important or not. That's not, that's not really important. It's just, it just feels urgent. So they have to do these things. They have to respond to every person who criticizes them and they have to make sure everyone feels good and they have to make sure they please everyone. And when they can't please everyone, they, they just, go down the spiral even more, a non-anxious person, non-anxious leader, is transformative in a completely opposite way. They're the ones who can take in the data, take in the information, and as Friedman advises, when you start getting no new information after you've asked the same question of different people, it's time to make a decision. So the non-anxious leader, they take in all the information of what what are the dynamics within this crisis. And then they calmly take all that together and they make a decision and they're resolute in it. And they say, Hey, this could change, but based on what we know now, this is where we're going. And they simply decide this is a direction and they are ready to deal with the repercussions because they know that this is a crisis, that there's going to be a lot of change, that people are going to be upset but they understand, hey, this is what's best. This is where we're going. And they decide on that direction, and they're able to be resilient through it. The third application I can think of as far as which kind of transformative leader are you is when someone's upset with you, and they, and they come and they, you know, they, they ask you the question, hey, can we meet? And they don't give you any other context and, and you just, they, they want to meet and you don't know what it's about, but you kind of have a feeling that they're going to be upset with you about something and you meet and, you know, whether it be in your office or you went to lunch or whatever it is, you meet with them and they're visibly like, you know, it's coming. They're upset with you. The reactive leader who's transformative in the wrong way is the one who, after hearing what the person has to say. They may not even let them finish. They may start listing out in their mind, and then that may start coming out in response, cutting the other person off in, in basically self-justifying why they did what they did, because usually as leaders, you know, people are reacting to us because of something we did, some kind of action we took. It's just kind of inherent in leadership. And so the reactive leader is going to be constantly trying to defend themselves constantly trying to convince the person across the table that, hey, you should see it my way, constantly trying to um, please that other person like, oh, well, if, if you're upset with that, then, you know, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can go with that is like, well, you know, either you're stupid or you, you, you obviously don't know what, what you're talking about, or it's the, well, let me try and cater to what you're saying 
because I obviously don't want you to be upset with me, and so I'm going to try and please you, and then you create a whole other host of problems. The non-anxious kind of leader who's transformative in a different way, where you take that anxiety, you take that frustration, that, that, that anger from the other person, and you're able to, to hear them and connect with them, but instead of reacting, you're able to stay calm and say, wow, I, I didn't know that was how you felt. Thank you for sharing that with me. And then you calmly just respond to whatever it is that they brought up. And if they insulted you as a person, you calmly call them out on that. If they disagreed simply with what decision you made, then you calmly say, hey, this is here's the reason why we made the decision. I understand you may not agree with that. And, uh, but, but this is where we're going and I would love for you to be a part of that. There's a difference between the kind of transformative leader we can be. We're the reactive and we raise the anxiety levels around us and we kind of just pour gasoline on the fire or we're the ones who are non-anxious. We're able to differentiate ourselves from them and be able to stay connected, but not become reactive and we're able to calm things down. So I'm, I'm curious, just be real honest, which kind of transformative leader are you currently? And, and, and the last thing is um, highly, highly, highly recommend this book. The, the link to this book is going to be in the description. Highly recommend you grab it and read it and highlight it and take notes, and then you probably should just go read it again. That's going to be my plan. I've got so many dog ears and highlights throughout this book. I've never highlighted the book in the introduction alone as much as this one. Um, and just it's full of good nuggets, full of things that focus on the thing under the thing. You know what I'm talking about. The, the issue underneath the issue. So let me know in the comments below what kind of transformative leader you believe you are. Just get honest with yourself, honest with us and I'd love to know because hey if you've been a reactive kind of leader that's okay the first step is to be aware of that and to move forward in a different way and uh, so again highly recommend this book and just as a way of saying thank you to you for getting to this point in the video I would love to send you some free resources just for free uh, if you just go to rookiepreacher.com slash subscribe, you can get access to our full resource library to help you preach and lead better. And you'll also get access to our five days to leading better email course, all free, just for you. Would love for you to join the community here at Rookie Preacher. Thanks again for joining me on this video. Hope it's been a blessing to you and I hope you have a great rest of your day.